from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Wow Report, where we count down the top 10 things of the week that made us go wow. I'm Dolph, thank you. Yes, wow. <laughs> um, I'm Fenton Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by our chief creative officer, Tom Campbell. Hello, hello. And James St. James, editor of The Wow Report. That's me. So let's jump in to the countdown this week at number 10. Number 10. Well, a bearer of collective bad news. This didn't make me go wow this week, but it seems hard to ignore, which is the most recent shooting, three in a row. I, I've lost track. Hmm. But the school shooting in Texas... The grocery shooting in Michigan. It's just, and I don't want to be strident and I don't want to be self righteous. I am just kind of, and not, it's not about me, but I feel broken. I feel sick. I feel like there's a weight on my chest that I have trouble getting rid of because, and I'm not. I can't even follow the news that closely, but all you need to see are those shining, beautiful faces of the students, the teachers, and my the big meme. And I know memes don't solve anything, but and I haven't been political on my my social media for a long time because I don't think it matters. But you know, thoughts and prayers need to be uh, replaced. It's sort of crossed out with policies and action. Yeah, and you know, and that idea that nothing can be done, that it's too complicated. And so therefore nothing can be done. You know, if someone gets stuck in a well, we spend resources and time and energy to get that child out of a well. Granted, that's a, more, a somewhat more simple mission. Or if people are, you know, hikers fall off a cliff. We have such, in, in so many instances, we have such respect for life and we'll go to any extent to try to save one person. And in this case- See, un Unfortunately, the argument though is, you know, the, if a child fell into a well and we did all we could to save the well, there is no- big well that is working against people you right. know, trying to, and there is, we have this monolithic NRA that is in control of the government. It just is. And well, right. There, there's, you know, for a while there, it looked as if the NRA was wobbling and it might go down, but it seems to be stronger than ever right now. And so much of Texas Republicans, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz and it all, and even Abbott and everybody seem to be controlled by this. And so it just, it feels and why sort of can't we see that. things in degrees and, and degrees and shades of a color versus you have all your rights, you have none of your rights? What about, you know, we all have, again, I'm not, I got nothing new to add to this argument. I'm just in a way, and it's hard to speak I, about I, anything. I saw two about things that, that, that really made some, that, that clicked with me. And the one thing was saying, you know, a week ago, two weeks ago, the Republicans were demonizing teachers, calling them groomers and pedophiles. And now this week, they're saying that the teachers are the ones who need the guns and they're the teachers are the ones who, who need to do this. Well, that's that's not the case. The other thing that I saw that was very interesting was that at this point, there has been so many drills for so many years for the, for the children. It's been 20 years you know, since Columbine and kids have been that now the shooters are are of the age that they had gone through drills their oh. entire life. So they know their way around all of that. They are so smart enough that they're the ones who they have been grown. They grow up knowing how to get around that system. Jesus. So I, I appreciate you not wanting to be strident, Tom, but I was just watching the news this morning, which was really hard to watch. And Greg Abbott comes on talking yeah. about the, the love of a child is a special gift that parents get to unwrap every day. And it is hard not to feel overwhelmed with rage that this person supported this, this law in Texas that you are granted. You have to be, I think, over 18, whatever. And you don't need a permit. You don't need a background check. You can don't even need to. You can carry a gun without any training. I and mean, like, that they have the Kevlar. They're able to buy the Kevlar. You know all that the, the body armor. So it's it's uh, that's why I do feel Greg Abbott, Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, and all of them who today, Friday, a meeting at the NRA convention yeah. in Texas. Yeah, uh, yeah. have blood in their hands, and they are licensing killing. 
They, and um, you know, not only are, do we have the problem with Mansion in cinema that just it never seems mm-hmm. to end, but also this week we just you know Marjorie Taylor Greene, Herschel Walker, they they skipped they you know they they you know raced past their their challengers and they're still there. So, and I'm not saying people shouldn't be strident, shouldn't people shouldn't yeah. be outraged, and we will totally. take the three. I'm just my my emotional check in at this moment is yeah, I'm totally. just. No, because once you start to feel it, you'd just be a heap on the floor. I dropped my kids off at school this morning, you know, and I'm like, I can't think about it because Mm -hmm. if you start to think about it, you're like, what the fuck am I doing even taking them to school? You know, like, and just the very thought that something like that might happen to them is Inconceivable. And that's just cliche and cliche, but truth on truth is, you know, insanity is doing the exact same thing. And expecting yeah. a different result. And yeah. I would but, like to see people try. And you yeah. know what? It's not that complicated. Other developed countries have passed gun control. It's like, it's, I, and there is a, uh, there is also a clear correlation between the increase in the number of guns and the increase in the number of people who are killed by them. There is a direct, cor- like, guns kill. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it is not, as the Republicans are saying, that we don't need more teachers with guns and we don't need to arm the students. I mean, it's just, that's madness. Mm. Oh, it's it's like, yeah. It's like well, watching a society destroy itself, really. Yeah. And on that note, let's try mm. to find eke a little joy. Yes, uh, the trivial things in life that there you go. Keep us happy and distracted. Well, exactly, exactly. So with that, number nine. Number nine. Number nine. This is something that truly made me go wow, and this is something that distracted me and put me in a good mood. I just want to say that on Friday, Good Morning American had a Harry Styles of Palooza <laughs> that was just one of the the happiest events that I've seen on television in years. You know. Um, Harry Styles was there from seven o'clock till 10 o'clock from the seven to eight hour, the eight to nine, the nine to 10 hour. He sang, he danced in the rain. He changed outfits. He gave interview after interview after interview. He talked to the fans. He was out. I mean, literally, I have never seen any. uh, He is the hardest working man in show business. There's just no two ways around it. And, you know, he's been famous now for 12 years. It is hard. It's hard to think about that. But, you know, he started on Pop Idol, I guess, in the UK when he was 16. And now he's 28 years old. And he really is. He's one of those He's so charismatic and he's so happy and good looking and his outfits are so gay. And he teases that he's bisexual. It was the X Factor. It wasn't Pop Idol. I'm sorry. Um, But he teases that he's bisexual and people are upset with him sometimes because he's so coy that he doesn't just come out and say it. But he's an ally. There's just no two ways about it. And he wears little dresses on stage and he wears high fashion. And he's just everything about him is just so... He's so talented. I just, I just love him to death, and I just think we are, he, we are in a wonderful period where we have st- a star like Harry because he really is one of the greatest stars that we have right now. James, did you go to Harry's house? It's up on La Cienega. Um, it was a pop up. Uh, Harry's yeah. house, and there was a line around the block, not just around the block, for blocks and blocks and blocks, <laughs> um, right opposite Kelly Wurstler and uh, Sally Hirschberger's place, you know? Well, I would have done that. I would have gone in a hot second. I would have stood in line for days. They were <laughs> sta- nine hours people were standing in line. And what a great concept, Harry's house, and you do a pop-up. Yes. Out. I mean, the memification of this whole thing is just so perfect. It's like perfect pop right whenever his name is mentioned i have to say my sister who is not like a groupie or like you know follows fads has been a lifelong beatles fan since the beginning and she thinks harry styles approaches the beat she she finds his charm to be beetle like how's that well i i honestly think that he's he's very mick jagger-esque in the in his charisma in the way people just like scream when they see him and in his moves and everything he's just, I, I i honestly believe he is the greatest star we have living up today <laughs> yeah I, there is a tradition of boy band you know boy band artists going like i think here robbie williams from take that yes he really he's very robbie williams. his music is very robbie williams. very robbie williams and i was thinking like well how come robbie didn't make it in the way because this does feel like harry's 
all those moments and people who've gone before mm -hmm. it's like come together in this perfect moment with Harry in a way it didn't it, quite work with uh, Robbie. It's, like, it's weird because I, Robbie is so quintessentially British, whereas uh, Harry has a more international. Transatlantic. But I got to say that mm -hmm. his new song, as, as it was, um, that he performed, which I hadn't, but Blake was the one who just sat me down the other day and was like, this is as it was. And we listened to it like three or four times. And it is, it's a great, it's a great song. He really is a great songwriter and he's sort of bowie-esque in his songwriting ability too sometimes well it's actually slightly retro um there, there's that song there was a, when i was a kid in the go to the cinemas and there was this sort of advertising company that ran all the ads before the movie and they were called pearl and dean and the thing went pa -pam, 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 and those sort of vocalizations I swear to god it's taking me back to that so like I, it's it's pure pop isn't it right <laughs> well, just to go back, I don't know if you guys heard, but Mick Jagger kind of dissed Harry Styles recently. <gasps> he said a, he's a superficial resemblance to my younger self. And he also said that he was a little bit more androgynous. Oh, please. We need to, we, you know, we all get crankier as we get older. We need to check each other from getting too cranky. Yeah. Isn't it, that like it, Madonna yeah. shading Lady Gaga and calling her reductive? <laughs> Harry Styles' new album, Harry's House, is out now, and you know it's just everywhere. <laughs> All right, number eight. Number eight. Uh, Davos Man. So, you know, every year, or I don't know, I guess COVID interrupted this, but every so often, the rich mega billionaire uber industrial peoples would gather in Davos, which is a ski resort in Switzerland, and have a sort of conference. And I just stumbled across this Twitter feed from this guy who calls himself the Davos Man. And it's hilarious. It's not that long. Um, he says, he writes, I just got to Davos, ready to fill the leadership vacuum with big ideas. <laughs> Small <laughs> ideas feel big when I'm in my Gulf Stream. <laughs> we so he's not really there this is just a, it's a yeah. parody account oh, yeah. yeah we elites are critical to making this debate globalized um he talks about thought fluences and um <laughs> wanting gloves to the work with smartphones made of mink uh and a one touch <laughs> order and paying in ethereum and just all that sort of bullshit rhetoric shit because yeah. We all know it is kind of shit. It's kind of like Jeff Bezos, these sort of mega billionaires. Well, like anytime you have a bunch of billionaires getting together to just sort of, I'm sorry, jerk each other off. I, right. I said it, but that's what it is. It feels a little bit like what people say about what the, you know, the Academy Awards is. Anytime you have famous rich people just patting each other on the back, you, you start to think that ugh, this is a little icky. Yeah. We caught environmental cataclysm by racing about in planes and helicopters. Global climate change affects all. 90% of beach houses will be impacted by rising sea levels. <laughs> uh, Bentley stuck in snow. Driver has terrible English. Sent a system for help, but can only see pine trees. Just <laughs> infrastructure could solve these inefficiencies. <laughs> we need drone transportation to ensure I don't miss my reservation at dinner. <laughs> it's just so great. It was just like a five minute read of, oh, that's Swarovski chilled champagne bong showed me a whole new level of hashtag mindfulness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think it's so great. Oh, and then it ends with him. He says, oh, um, he ran, ran into the Bank of America bros at CrossFit. We had a quick brain shower on big data applications to scaling blockchain ledgers. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to be Bank of America's next chief sustainovation officer. <laughs> I like brain shower. I, that, that's his brain. Name, <laughs> sustainification officer. I love it. It's so good. But then what I didn't know is there's actually a real book, a serious book called Davos Man. How the Billionaires Devoured the World by Peter Goodman. And it, it, it talks about this thing, James, that you were talking about, about you know those so enriched by globalization, their yachts are here and there. They belong to no country and that they're sort of just amassing monopoly power to crush competitors. So, so there's a serious book. And then there's also this hilarious guy, uh, Davos Man. 
And this was on Twitter or Facebook? Yeah, it was on Twitter. Funny enough, it was actually posted four years ago, but I guess they've just had the first Davos convention in a while. And so I guess it resurfaced and I didn't notice that it was old news, but I guess that's, you know, like your other thing, you know, the space-time continuum has been killed. So it's it felt <laughs> new to me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll post the link on the WOW report. Um, Squirrel Friends, the official RuPaul's Drag Race podcast premieres May 23rd, hosted by Lonnie Love and Alec Mappa. Two of my favorite people in the world. Absolutely. They recap, react to the latest Drag Race episodes, starting with RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars season. Oh, that's going to be fun. I can't wait for that. Seven. Yeah. Uh, Blake, do you have a question for us? I sure do. Now, I think you and James are going to know this right off the bat, so it's really a question for Tom. What do Michelle Visage, trans punk legend Jane County, party girl Suzanne Barsh, activist Michelangelo Signorelli, Club Kid, Jenny Telia, and more have in common? I, I, I don't know. We'll have what the answer right. Mean? Yeah, we'll have the answer right after the break here on the WOW Report. You're listening to World of Wonders WOW Report. Things that make us go wow. Hey, welcome back to the WOW Report. I'm Fenton here with James and Tom and Blake. Hi. Yep, and I asked specifically Tom because yes. I think James and, and Fenton will know this. What do our very own Michelle Visage, trans punk legend James Count, Jane County, party girl Suzanne Barsh, activist Michelangelo Signorelli, club kid Jenny Telia, what do they all have in common? They all caught crabs from James St. James. <laughs> How did you know? It's so brilliant. Just again. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, a long time ago. <laughs> well, they did catch something, right? Blake? Super spreader, super spreader, crab super spreader, James St. James. <laughs> yeah, they you are. Know you're old when you can joke about crabs because you're like, you can't <laughs> crabs, nobody. Um, I, I, it's nothing, is it something to do with the ballroom scene? Mm, no, they are all. The answer. They are all going to be on season two of Night Fever. Coming really soon. Working feverishly well, I feel on it so now. used. I feel so used. It was just a cheap <laughs> promotion. Ooh. But they did catch something, Tom. They did catch a disease, night fever, which is essentially <laughs> incurable. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to hear. Mm, we're counting down top 10 things that made us go, wow, we've reached number seven, Tom. Number seven. It's actually James is it has has is gonna, has my back on this one, but I do like to say the word words monkeypox. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm actually taking over Tom. I'm doing a two parter on on monkeypox right now because I've got a lot to say about it. Now, so you're the Harry Styles. This is the James of Palooza, right? <laughs> the, the James, the monkeypox of Palooza, po pox of Palooza here, uh, and it gets progressively gloomier and darker. Okay, and darker. here we go. I'll smile now, but. I have to start off by saying that I know a lot about monkeypox because my Aunt Joanne had monkeypox, okay? Now, this was about 10 or 15 years ago. She, My Aunt Joanne was a larger-than-life personality, just a wonderful, wonderful woman. And uh, she was about 80 years old, and she was on safari in Africa, as, as she was wont to do. And she was there taking pictures, not shooting animals, right? And as she was there, I think it was in Kenya, and a monkey ran up to her and bit her on the leg. And she laughed and didn't really think that much about it. And, you know, ha, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. And she went to the hospital and she got some medicine and went about her, her day. Well, about a month later, she's back in, in America and she's acting a little wonky. She's, she's not making much sense. She's saying some weird things. She's slurring a little bit. And the family was sort of a little concerned, thinking, is she mixing her meds? Is this the onset of dementia? What's going on with Aunt Joanne? Well, she was out driving one day, and she passed out behind the wheel and drove into a tree and totaled oh. her car. And that's when the family said, we've got to do something. And they took her to the hospital, and it turns out that it was monkeypox. Well, 
And so they were able to treat it and she was able to get over and everything. But the interesting thing is you've been hearing about monkeypox, but something you haven't heard yet is this brain fog that I know exists with monkeypox and that they were acting a little weird. That hasn't been mentioned at all. All you see is the lesions and, and right. the fever and things. But, but it's related to smoke. And you said it was going to get gloomier. Well, it, that, that's my part two. That's my part two. It starts oh. to get gloomier. But can, but can COVID fog and monkey, monkey pox uh, fog come together and burn each other out and create a new level of clarity, perhaps? I have a feeling it's it, it's, it will actually, you'll be walking dead zombies is what happens <laughs> oh, no. if you combine the two. But the other thing that's that's interesting about that is that they, what we've been hearing on the news, we haven't, they say that it's like a two-week um, incubation period or anything, but this was over a month before the incubation took place with my with my aunt. So we have been getting some some false things about it. From what I know personally, that there is a longer incubation than what they're saying, and that it's not just lesions in in the pox. That there's brain fog and some other things that are happening too. So I just do you remember how she was know. treated? What they did? Do you remember? I don't remember. Like I said, this is a year and a half. This was like 10 years ago. Yep. And we all just laughed and laughed because, you know, leave it to Aunt Joanne to get monkey pox because we'd never heard the word before. And it was so funny. But since you don't have monkeys running around in the States biting people on the leg, how do you get monkey pox? Well, what happens is, it, and this is funny because it's literally the last scene of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where you have one man, one person who manages to spread it to the entire world. He was an airplane pilot. It's the last scene. I'll send it to you because it's just fascinating. He gets onto a plane and you see the board, you know, the board at the airport of all the different flights. And you see the plane take off and it goes to one place and it spreads. He spreads it to 10 people. Those 10 people get on 10 other airplanes and they go to 10, 10 cities and they spread it to 10 people there. And pretty soon you have, it's just like, a, it's like explosions all over the world of thousands and 10,000, a million, 10 million, a billion people getting infected by this one man getting on an airplane. And so you can have one person in Kenya get it and they get on an airplane. And before you know it, they've, they've spread the, to the entire airplane. They, those people get on other airplanes. And the monkey box doesn't on. spread just by the air, does it? It's no, like it, is. Air. it is. It is. Oh, it is God. absolutely airborne. Oh, I it, oh. yeah. It, so that's the th you know one person gets it and then they spread it through airborne. It's it's totally airborne. Oh, but it also is you know skin contact, and that's why they're saying that gay men are getting it more. They say that it all started at a rave in Ibiza where everyone was sleeping with each other. And that's what you're seeing. I don't know if you've seen that it's targeting gay men inordinately. So you've been having all sorts of weird AIDS flashbacks about monkey. Pop. But it's not like gay men are the only people who touch when they're having sex, right? But I have a feeling that there's also some sort of um, uh, not only blood to blood, but um, semen to semen contact is probably or semen into, you know, blood. We we my my point is we just don't know enough yet, and we're getting some weird misinformation out there. But I am the person you should turn to. So you have to stay tuned for part two of your monkeypox recap, right? Yes. Which I our guess medical, like our medical consultant James St. James here on the Wow Report. <laughs> so should we just go to number six and carry yeah. on? Number six. I'm, I, I'd like to extrapolate a little bit on a worst case scenario that will happen with monkeypox. Because you haven't already done that. So. No, 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 no. I haven't because it gets worse. It gets progressively worse here. Mm. And, you know, I don't know that monkeypox is the thing that's going to wipe out the human race. You know, I, I'm not being that doom and gloom about monkeypox here. But what happens is... After the COVID thing that just happened, where it became so politicized and it became red versus blue, it became uh, right wingers versus libtards, and it became you know anti vaxxers anti vaxxers anti maskers, that the next time something big comes along, whether it is monkeypox, whether it's another strain of COVID, whether it's a bird flu, a swine flu, an Ebola type thing that's transmitted through the air that nobody is going to do shit about it. You're going to have millions of people not mask, not vax, when there is something even bigger than COVID, and millions are going to die because, of, because it's been politicized. And when that happens, there's also going to be, and I've been saying this for, for a long time, that 
there's the, between the red and the blue states and the in the right wing and the left wing and the blah 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 there is going to be a civil war that is going to come about in the next 10 years and it's going to break america into two and as people are dying as the millions are dying that what will happen is both parts of america are going to weaken and that's when russia north korea china swoop in and that's end game because you have a weakened, you have two weakened Americas. That's when they come in, they swoop in. That's when World War Three happens. That's when it, the human race is wiped out because it's a combination of the plague of of the weakened American state, and everyone gets to, and it's just it's, it's wow. that's end game. Things that make us go wow. I've never wanted to be wrong before, James, and I want you to be wrong now. I'm not dismissing what you're saying. I just hope I wish you're very very wrong. Well, well, as the as the world is ending, let's all have one last uh, radio show, and I get to call that I am right. I get to crow. Yes. You should you should pre-record something. If you're watch, if you're listening to the show, I was right. The world's coming to an end. <laughs> well, I should. It's the last. It's the last thing that. It's what we send to the aliens as the world is ending. <laughs> that James St. James do. He's not coming. I tell you. James, I don't want to yuck your yum, but the human to human transmission of monkeypox virus is pretty rare, according to Dr. Van Kerkhove. I'm telling and, you, I'm telling you, you're wrong. I am telling you, Dr. Did I'm anyone telling else you in your family get it from your mad auntie? Not mad auntie. No, no, no. I'm just saying that there's misinformation out there like there was in the beginning of COVID. Remember mm. how much misinformation we heard in the beginning of well, COVID? Is this is the beginning of the that misinformation. Well, James, Dr. Doctor St. James, we look forward to your further investigation of this disease as the weeks proceed. And hold on, like, like I was just saying, Fenton, that this might, that monkeypox might not be the, the big one that's coming, but there is a big one that is coming, and that's what I'm saying is... Well, it's the always problem. Monkeypox sounds like the best name for a cereal or or a new a new pattern. Oh, it's what are you wearing? It's monkeypox. But unfortunately, it's linked to this terrible. And I, I just wanted to just say my final thought though is that we have been manifesting this in books and movies and television and in, in literature for 75 years now. We collectively humankind has been manifesting an apocalypse. And it just oh, it, yes, but James, ever since literature began, we've been manifesting apocalypse. So you know, I don't know. I would say it, no, I would know. say that we take it back to HG Wells is the first time, and that's all that's been 110 years. Well, that's so, a logical. The Bible. Book of Revelation, honey, comes a little bit before H.G. Oh, okay. Wells. Okay. okay. Well, okay, let's change the subject. Number five. Number five. Something really cheery. Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> wow. This is going down in history as our gloomiest <laughs> episode ever. Well, the good news is, because we know that, you know, there's... um. Um, book bunnings have become a bit of a thing and a lot of books are banned in schools. In fact, Margaret Atwood's book, uh, first published in 1985, I think, has been banned in schools almost ever since. Um, so and Penguin, talk about manifesting. We have manifest. We have manifested The Handmaid's Tale. Well, here's the good news, James. This is why it's a good news segment. Penguin Random House have published a limited edition unburnable book version of The Handmaid's Tale. I love it. It, it is, it's is—it's got a black cinefoil dust jacket. It's got a white heat shield foil pages. It's section sewn with nickel wire. It's got a phenolic hardcover, stainless steel head and tail bands, and Captain High Temperature Adhesive. So you can actually like take a, a torch to it and heat it up to 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit, and it and will it's not only burn. And it's only 62% asbestos. So that's the good news as well. <laughs> right, right. You don't have to wear it. And you, this can be yours because there's only one. And it's go. It's actually currently being auctioned at Sotheby's right now. So go to Sotheby's.com and you can bid on it. The right. current bid... It's uh current bid is at forty eight thousand dollars for this book. I I say it's a bargain, and it's it's being auctioned until June seventh. So you have until then. Don't you wish they would do that with all of the To Kill a Mockingbird and everything that is being you know Boy Meets Boy, all of the books that are being burned right now. Party Monster by James St. James needs to be. We need to do uh, an unburnable version. 
Well, um, I've been hoping that Freak Show, my my book Freak Show, gets banned because uh, that's the best thing for sales. I keep say I keep pleading on Twitter, please ban my book, please ban my book. You should please start going to like junior high schools and opening the trunk of your car and trying to sell it to like kids. Yeah, at school. don't think I haven't already done that, girl. Like Angeline, <laughs> there you go. Yes. Um, so if that, if you fancy that, that that you could bid for, and all the proceeds will go to Pen America, which you know is a nonprofit focused on free expression through literature. So that's a good thing. And there's a little video we'll, we'll post on the Wear Report. It's kind of cute of Margaret Atwood, bless her, taking a blowtorch to this and trying to burn it, and it won't burn. Um, which is good because if it burned, it wouldn't be unburnable, would it? So. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. New Wow series coming uh, August 11th. Food Network and Discovery Plus. It's complicated. <laughs> we had to fight for that title, didn't we, Tom? We did. Tabitha Brown, who is a TikTok sensation, she you know broke. You know who she is. But those of you who don't, she broke out during uh, COVID. She she's she's this beautiful black woman. She's about. But I really connected with her because of she she oozes comfort and 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 warmth. And she's just she's a spiritual being. She also in her real life made the choice to start to be vegan. And then she has a family who's some vegan, some not vegan. And so she just recognized it's complicated. To serve a family anymore, it's complicated. When you get a group of your friends together at a restaurant, it's complicated. So she has it's a, it's a it's a cooking um, competition show, the first on um, on on uh, the Food Network that actually deals with uh, plant based food. But it's delicious, it's fun, and the most important part is you get to spend some time with Tabitha Brown, who is uh, just the best. And you also get to say it's complicated a lot because I love that word. I think yeah. that you should, we don't need the word complicated. Complicated. No. It's complicated. You know what I always say about James St. James? It's complicated. complicated. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. Blake, have you got a question? I do, and it's food related. Mm. What is the most rare M&M color? We'll be right back after the break with the answer. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report for Radio Andy. It's Fenton here with James St. James and Tom Campbell and Blake. Yep, and I asked, what color M&M is the most rare? I'm going to say the blue. The blue is hard to find sometimes. Blue. Gosh, I gotta say something different. Um, red. The red. Is there even a red one? Yeah, there is. Oh, okay. It's actually brown. Uh, well, because there, there was the brown, and then there was the tan. Remember, so they broke right. it into two. Well, it's the brown, and I know you're gonna ask why. So why? I'm gonna say we can post the answer to that on the law report. I believe that. <laughs> Deeply researched, Blake. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we're counting down the top 10 things this week that made us go, wow, we've reached number four. Number four. Dark times, uh, serious times, uh, always looking for a little bit of light and love and laughter. And I have found it with the premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. It's on Paramount Plus this particular season. It's worth getting for a couple months at least to watch this. It's also on Wow Presents Plus if you're watching this internationally um, or listening internationally. The um, and I know we make the show, but I got to tell you, we made it last year. There's you know, and we say as a joke, but it's real. It takes a village people, so many people. It's an all stars, all winners season, so we have eight winners. It's a new format. Nobody goes home. It's more of a point system, um, and so you get to watch eight of the best queens ever in the franchise compete against each other. It is a competition. They do have feelings toward each other, but there's also so much love and respect and talent. The first two episodes, you guys saw them, but it, you know, the first two episodes, first of all, it attracted um, 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 uh, uh, Naomi Campbell to come and pay respect to the Queens, which was an amazing moment in life, in television, in reality television. She and Rue, go back to like uh, the 1990s and the Versace show. She goes, Rude, you remember when when we all, when, when, when Versace had a show and he played supermodel and we all walked for you? It's like, just incredible. And mm. and the moment of- Daphne. The, 
That, yes, thank you, Daphne. Guinness was all it, on the second And suddenly, episode. ding, 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 it all comes together. The lights go on in Georgia where you realize that's why she was at DragCon. Like, I, yes. didn't, I, 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 I was thinking, what is she doing there? Now, all of a sudden, I realize that she is now part of the family. She's a friend of Ruth. She's a friend of the show. And, and um, you know, to see Shea Coulee's, uh reaction uh, to Naomi Campbell, who literally, we've never surprised them with, you know, when we announce the guests, when Rue announces the guests, oftentimes they're surprised and blown away. You know, we had Lady Gaga walk in the room. We've done some things, but we never did what, how we set up Naomi, which was like, hey, you guys, meet me on the runway. And Rue said, um, you know, what becomes a legend most? Don't ask me, ask her. And she took the corner. And it's like, the energy waves in real life. You feel them in the show, but there's nothing like being around it. It was just, everyone was blown away. And the other thing about Naomi Campbell is she's not, she, del- she brings you Naomi Campbell, mm. the full brand, the full fantasy, the full experience. You're not seeing like a woman who is famous, you know, la, la, la. it's like, it's Naomi Mama Campbell. And if you and- ever thought that walking down a runway was a straightforward thing yeah. or an easy thing, yeah. like seeing her, it was like, and tears because the artistry, the poise, the every sort of micro, it was just an incredible performance. And I, yeah, she was just walking the runway, but it was so epic and amazing. And as you say, seeing them, seeing her, it was like, it did my head in. It really did. And I, the other thing, Tom, and praise to you really, and the team is like that the love for this, for this iteration on the social media, which I sort of try to like look at it through my, because I'm always scared there's going to be hateful things. But the overwhelming amount of love is just amazing and deservedly so. So, But you start to realize that there are all these different different levels. As much as there's drag everywhere and you hear about it, it's like there are drag queens who are starting off in their first few years. There are drag queens who have been doing it forever, the, the, the super pros. So there is, you know, in the past 15 years, we're up to 15 years almost, There are, there's this whole um, – a college, ecology that environment that exists within the drag world and there's so many ways to enjoy it um also shout out to cameron diaz for our first judge who said to me in the in the in the dressing room and she didn't elaborate she said this show saved my life she was in a, i was in a i was in a dark state of mind and i watched drag race like in the last couple of years she watched it from the beginning to the end and she came and she knew everybody she knew everyone's season everyone's dress it was incredible and then the last thing a shout out to all the queens, but especially Jinx Monsoon, because we asked them to do Snatch Game and perform two characters. And she did Natasha Lyonne, Leon, who we're friends with, and Judy Garland. Um, <clears throat> unbelievable. And they're all, they're all so good. It's, we're running out of time. Or every moment, every enough. moment. Like, the, who, who did Madame? Because I'd completely forgotten about the existence of Madame, this sort of 80s, um, James, you know Madame, the sort yeah, of the, doll. The, yeah, the, the, right, the, 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 the puppet. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, of course. It was an amazing thing to see. That was Raja. Raja, yes. And the last, I will give you a, t- a tease. But this week, look for um, Vanna White makes an appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race the first time. Hello, oh, Van- yeah. Vanna White drag queens. Come on. Wow. <laughs> well, I said again, congratulations. Really amazing. Number three. Number three. Well, I'm going to keep it with with fashion legends being legends and legends meeting legends here. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see the most important picture of our lifetime came out. I sent it to you both. I hope you had a chance to look at it. It's Amanda Lepore and Anna Wintour walking down the street. I, Tom, I can't believe you haven't seen this. I did I, see that. I thought you meant a movie. I didn't no, see that no, photo. Yes. Picture. Yes. It is a photograph. Call the Pulitzer Committee immediately. This is just, <laughs> it is so spectacular. I posted, I immediately got 8,000 likes within two seconds. I literally over, like, next time I looked at it, it was, people were going bananas over this. And this, I, the comments were, you know, like Amanda Lepore and a fan, or, you know, an old lady sees Amanda Lepore for the first time. Like people were having so much fun with it. And, you know, you know, a cat may look upon a queen was one that I saw that I, that I loved. Um, it's, there, there, she, 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 Amanda's walking into Balenciaga and she is just as the Amanda Lepore as she can be. And then next to her, you see Anna Wintour. And Anna is always so inscrutable anyway behind the glasses and the hair. But you can see that she is surprised, that she is amused, that there is 
I think, having studied Anna Wintour as inscrutability for decades, I think she's really thrilled and happy. I, and just, I do too. Just I, I would, alive I with joy. Just like, just like, just made her day or her you day. You see her with a slight smile on her face. And I would not be surprised if uh, uh, Amanda is invited to the Met Gala next oh, year. I expect I, I, Anna wrote a note, a beautiful handwritten note on yes. divine stationery. Maybe, maybe there were flowers as well. Or, or even a roll of Balenciaga tape so she can wrap herself up. I don't know. Like, I just... it's funny because there was sort of a push me, pull me there, a, a give and take where it yeah. sort of it, it made uh, Amanda relevant. It made Anna relevant again. Like the two of them together, it just it was two generations. It was interesting. I also posted immediately afterward on Instagram that famous the old Hollywood picture of oh. um, Sophia Loren looking at Jane Mansfield. And I titled it Anna Wintour Checks Out uh, Amanda Lepore. And that got thousands and thousands of likes, too, because it's so, you know, Jane, you know, Amanda is Jane Mansfield. And you just sort of see Sophia looking at the breast situation. You see Anna looking at Amanda's breast. All right. Well, let's move on to number two. Number two. Um, Trey Spiegel, who writes for The Wow Report, posted an interesting item the other week about the Space Hotel that is being built. Um, uh, well, who knows if it actually will be built, but uh, Orbital Assembly, which is the name of the company, are building a Voyager station. And it looks like the thing out of 2001, and it's gonna be a space hotel that will accommodate 400 people, and it's supposed to open in 2027, which isn't that far away. So, but wait, is this only billionaires? Billionaires can come to, can fly up to it? Well, he says that his goal has always been to make it possible for large amounts of people to live, work, and thrive in space. So the idea is no, James. You can go. We can all go. I can go if I'm going to be a janitor is what you're saying. <laughs> I was going to say going would sound horrible to me. Let's just be honest. But worse of that would be working at the I space. I was going to say, you're a cafeteria oh, yeah. worker serving billionaires who get to fly there. That does not sound like my plan. A plan Tim Alator had this to say. He said, our environment isn't just Earth. Actually, it's a little shades of Davos, man. Our environment isn't just Earth. It's the entire solar system. And there's so many resources out there. So as we start to utilize and capitalize on those resources, that's going to change and improve the standard of living here on Earth. So it's the usual trickle down theory. Now it has to trickle down from outer space. It has to trickle down yeah. through the atmosphere. <laughs> now, if, if I am a janitor in space, okay, if that is my fate, I do want to also say that one of the problems with being in space more than 100 days, you know, your, your muscles atrophy, your bones soften, and you lose height and density and all that stuff is what happens. So I have a pe feeling these poor people who are the janitors and the cafeteria workers for it's billionaires white, are going to come back to Earth eventually in, in a really horrible condition. It's White Lotus 3 in outer space. White Right? Yeah. That, that makes me a thing. The other thing, I feel like James, you have the title for your new book, Space Janitor, and you should sell it to Adam Sandler. It's a big My movie. Life is a Space Janitor by James St. James. Do you know what you got to do, James? You got to do some NFTs of Space Janitor and then monetize that by creating some kind of content of Space Janitor content or dolls, you know. Um, yeah. So, uh, they, oh, here's a little detail. They were originally going to call it the Von Braun Station, named after the German scientist Nazi, who at the end of World War II was instrumental in the V2 rocket program, which is the last gasp of the Third Reich raining down rockets. But um, they decided that perhaps that was a bad idea. Why not call it the Ava Braun Station <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Well, it's the Ava Braun Honeymoon Suite. Yes. <laughs> and Shay, bless him, thinks the interiors are very lackluster and dull and, and that they really need to sort of call Kelly Wurstler and get someone on it because uh, <laughs> as Space Hotels go, he says it looks like a Marriott in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll take one more break. Um, Vanji 24 Hours of Love is premiering June 9th, 2022 on Wow Presents Plus. It's presented by... House of Love cocktails and mocktails. And we're giving you Vanji as you have never seen her before. In 24 Hours of Love, she meets a wide variety of potential suitors 
And on the hour, every hour, we have an elimination with the intention being that will she find true love? I kind of know the answer. That's why. I, I also think that, you know, the, the idea of having a dating show that lasts over months is so unrealistic, especially for, for, for gays and queers. No, so I think for 24 hours, you know, I, I think it's a realistic time frame. <laughs> right. Perfect for your short attention span. When you come back, we all reveal the number one thing this week that made us go, wow. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with James and Tom and Blake. We've been counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow, and we've reached number one. Number one. Number one, I think we ought to, we ought to head out on a positive note here. And this is one of those positive stories that I've seen all week long. It brought me to tears, happy tears. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful speech. I saw it on TikTok and uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, 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 Florida High School class president Xander Moritz was told by his principal that if he used the word gay in his valedictorian speech, that they would cut the microphone. Well, now Xander is proudly gay and his speech was about, you know, the the overcoming so many obstacles and and the the hope that he feels. But he, he was told he couldn't use the word gay. So he substituted it with having curly hair being gay was having curly hair and he said you know all my life i struggled with having curly hair and lately you know the humidity in florida has been such that my curly hair has has is is been threatened and i want everyone to know that having curly hair is a wonderful thing and we're all going and and the, my friends it, it just goes on and on and on and every time he comes across the gay he talks and the uh, it, the the class starts out giggling at when he says curly hair but by the end they're standing and applauding <laughs> everyone is sobbing it is just so and the principal is sitting there knowing he should cut it but he can't cut it and it was just it you know it makes you think the kids are all right and that there is hope for this generation because they're god bless xander moritz if you haven't had a chance to check this out go look at his speech online but think about think about gays and other uh, uh, uh undermined people throughout history and they've always had to get their message out in code or yeah. metaphor and it's it's sort of keeping in that great tradition of not being silenced, of working within the censorship. Yeah, and it's we, yeah, we won't be silenced. But it's it's such a shame that in 2022 oh my that God. we still have to fucking code being gay. It's so brilliant to be able to yeah. turn that into a comedy moment of pure joy. I mean, like, yeah. so fucking brilliant to not only take the, the repression, but the, turn it against itself. Yeah, and make something far better than just a, a nine gay speech. Nothing yes. wrong with that. We wouldn't be talking but, like, about it probably if he had just given his speech as originally. Just, right. You know, yeah. Let's make yeah. it a six-part Netflix series. I love it. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the War Report on Radio Andy Sirius. I want to wish everybody a happy holiday weekend. It is Memorial Day, and let's remember those who've given their lives for this country. Not only those who serve, but also those who recently lost their lives in these appalling and unconscionable outbreaks of mass violence and mass shootings. But onwards, because as James says, I do believe the kid, the children are the future and they will sort it out where we have failed to do. But in the meantime, um, same time, place, same place next week. Go out and do something that makes the world go. Wow. wow.